We could talk about how video game communities create their own challenges when they are hungry for new experiences in their favorite games, thus creating speedruns and even absurd speedruns called meme runs. But of course, this falls far too short in terms of the needs that video game players in general may have outside of challenges like self-imposed races. What if I want to play my video game in the best possible quality, but Nintendo gives me a cash grab port for 60 bucks that I can't even play on PC? What if Sony doesn't give me the tools to create mods in their games, and I'm already tired of playing the same story 60 times in a row? Or if I just want to see how they made this game from the inside? Well, as we could expect, the community has no limits and has started to make its way in all this, and much more. What would you think about playing your favorite games like Zelda Ocarina of Time, Mario 64, or Jack and Daxter natively on your computer and without emulators? What if I tell you that they would be ultra-optimized with the best graphics possible, customizable in almost every imaginable way, and really easy to mod? And that if you know how to program or model, you would have access to all the game's guts to modify or see them as you want? All this sounds like an absolute win-win, right? Well, you're lucky because in recent years there has been a revolution in the gaming community. The revolution of video game decompilations. But before starting, I'm sure both you and the Nintendo lawyers watching this video are asking yourselves a very simple question. Isn't it illegal to play these games on PC? Isn't Mr. Nintendo going to show up with the whip, throw everything away and send us all to jail? Or is it not even illegal to play with them on emulators? All that and much more in today's video. To begin with, I think we can't go on without explaining one thing. What the hell is a decompilation? Can we eat it? Why should Nintendo or any company be even a little worried about them? Without going into too much detail, to create the video game that you put your hands on, developers start from a base project that contains all the code, images, cinematics. This project with its source code is compiled to turn it into instructions that can be understood by the console in which it will be played. And the file inside our cartridge or disk, what we usually know as ROM or ISO, is created. Once we have the file, decompiling it would basically mean going the other way round to go from a lot of ones and zeros back to the source code so we can just read, if you press B, Mario jumps. It's like having the uncompressed project again with all the files the developers worked on, giving the community an almost infinite freedom to tinker with it. But this decompilation thing isn't really something new. There already were many video game communities, mainly from computer games, that created mods by decrypting the code from specific files using their own decompilers by programming in machine code or by modifying the RAM memory. However, the big change, and therein lies the revolution, has come when the community started decompiling entire games. The way to obtain the decompilation of a full game isn't easy at all, and it usually takes years. In this video, I'm only going to tell you a very, very, very simplified scheme that will surely anger more than one programmer in the comments, but it is what it is. Here we go. First of all, the video game file is usually taken and disassembled using specialized programs. This makes it so that we can more or less have a file structure, but they are still in a language very close to machine code called assembly that is far from accessible to almost anyone. In case the game is relatively old, so to speak, usually launched before the 2000s or mid-90s, more or less, after documenting everything well and manually fixing any inaccuracies that may have appeared, it stops here, since it is already a recreation of the original source code. Working with assembly language is torture, but back then devs were forced to do it due to the limitations of the time, mainly for memory optimization and similar topics. In case it's a more modern game and the disassembly isn't the source code yet, those files are decompiled using other specialized programs, or even manually, to translate this bunch of instructions meant for the console into something closer to our language, what is usually known in programming as a high-level language. But, of course, these processes and programs have no freaking idea of what you are really giving to them, so there are still hours and hours of manual work trying to guess what the hell that code was meant to do. If this unknown variable is the player's life or his money, if this function handles the controls or the stores, it's like doing a puzzle, but with the added difficulty that besides guessing where each piece goes, at the same time, you are coloring them with no other clue that seeing what other pieces could fit around them. Sounds like torture, and it surely is. But after months and months of hard and slow work, at last you could have a decompilation that when compiled again, gives you a ROM that is identical to the original and that is ready to be modified by anyone that dares to try. 
It may seem like an almost impossible task, especially if you don't know much about programming and such, but there are many video games that already have a finished decompilation or that have it on their way. And I'm sure that more than one will surprise you. As these projects are fandom stuff and aren't official, sometimes it's hard to even know they exist or to find documentation about them. But if I'm not mistaken, the first known decompiled game was Super Mario 64, for which they were working from August 2019 to October 2021. Two whole years to decompile a game from the year I was born. You really have to love the plumber to dedicate your free time and without receiving a penny to this kind of project. But the same happens with Open Goal, the project that is going to bring the Jack and Daxter trilogy natively to PC, having already finished with the Precursor Legacy, which took over two years, and having almost completed the decompilation of Jack 2. We also have the Ship of Harkinian project, which has managed to give us a native port of Ocarina of Time on PC, or the Zelda Reverse Engineering team, who already have achieved a complete decompilation of Ocarina of Time, and are working on more titles like Majora's Mask, Minish Cap, Breath of the Wild or Twilight Princess. Other games that also have a full decompilation are Tohau, Doom, the third gen Pokemon games, Sonic 1, 2 and CD, or even Sonic Mania, a 2017 game. But as I said before in this video, it's a revolution that has just started. And that's why we have a ton of titles that have their decomps in progress, such as Banjo-Kazooie, Silent Hill, Sly Cooper, Kirby 64, Mario Party, Paper Mario, Mario Odyssey, Smash Bros, Super Monkey Ball, Wii Sports, 4th Gen Pokemon Games, Pokemon Snap, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, Perfect Dark, and many, many more. In fact, I would recommend you to search if your favorite games already have a decompilation. Who knows if it's already in the process and in a few months or years, the community will give it to you for your pretty face. Wow, so many games already have or will have a decompilation. Sounds really cool, but what's the point of having a decompilation of my favorite game? How does it affect me? Well, starting from the premise that a native port could be made for PC or any platform without the need of emulators, it would surely gain in comfort and accessibility for everyone. But then the community would have it really easy to improve the game's resolution, FPS or performance, or to create all kinds of mods for it. Whether they involve code, textures, brand new levels, it could even be used to take full mechanics or entire characters out to other games. Or look for example at the Jack and Daxter's community that in just a few months since the first Jack game was decompiled, they developed a multiplayer mod both online and local. This, in any other way, would have been almost impossible. Basically, it means to have access to the definitive version of that video game. Not only for casual users, but also for new players, modders, curious people, or even students all born from the love and care of the community. It's even too beautiful to be true. Okay, okay, you've convinced me. This decompilation thing is really nice, but something like that isn't illegal? At the end, you're playing on PC and not on their platform, modifying the whole game behind their backs. Why don't Nintendo, Sony, or any company affected show up holding a lawsuit? Well, that's a really interesting question, which I'll answer after the commercial. Legal or illegal? That's the question. Making it clear that I'm not any kind of lawyer, legal advisor, or something like that, in theory, no. Not even Nintendo itself can get its hands on these decompilations, and the reason is very simple. They are not piracy. Many people believe that piracy is anything other than playing a video game as its developers brought it into the world. Playing Pokemon on an emulator? Piracy! Playing Ratchet and Clank with a mod? Piracy! You are sailing the seven seas with your Xbox and going around robbing people? Phew, that really is piracy. But no, piracy is, basically, the act of distributing or selling something that you don't own. For example, downloading a video game or publishing it for others to download is piracy. The thing is, these decompilation projects do not share a single file of the original games. If you take a look at their GitHub pages, they will always tell you at the beginning that what they give you is useless unless you already have a copy of the game. Basically, doing it right consists in creating the program that is able to decompile and recompile your game. Giving the decompiled game itself away would be illegal. You have a very clear example with the decompilations of Mario 64 and Ocarina of Time. The only thing Nintendo could do was to take down download links to already decompiled games. Nothing more. In the end, it's a program that doesn't belong to any company decompiling a file that you're supposed to have bought. 
this is the only way to make everything legal, or at least until proven otherwise or something changes. I mean, we all know that Mickey Mouse should have become public domain like a gazillion years ago or more. If any company really steps in in this matter, I don't really know what would happen or what could change. But for the moment, Community 1, Mario Entrepreneur, 0. And this does not only apply to decompilations. For example, many, many people still think that emulators are illegal, but then why don't Nintendo or Sony take them down? The websites are totally public, and even projects like Yuzu or RPCS3 have Patreons to fund themselves. And, I mean, I think it's kind of impossible that those companies don't know about their existence at all nowadays. The point is that, no, emulators are not illegal. An emulator is basically a program that is capable of, as its name suggests, emulating video games. But... If you need files from that console to make the emulator work, as happens precisely with Yuzu and RPCS3, they ask you for them, who in theory should get them from his own console. And even for the licenses for the games you're gonna emulate, in this way these emulators, as well as the decompilations, become totally legal and remain public, without these companies being able to do anything about them. It's completely legal for you, as a user, to make a backup copy of your own video game to play it on an emulator or decompile it. At least in the USA, where most of these projects are from. This legal stuff greatly depends on each country. For example, in Spain it was legal, and even court rulings said so. But since 2015 things have changed, and now it's not really clear if you need an authorization from the owner. Something quite absurd because Pikachu never answers my emails. It seems to be a bit fuzzy at the moment in many countries, so if there's any lawyer around that knows about this specific topic, please leave a comment with your opinion. Although here, I should also clarify that, in any case, what would be legal is that you use your own backup copy for this purpose, as there are people who think that if you have bought a video game, you can download it, and in reality, that's still piracy, of course. And the thing about not distributing files that belong to a company also applies to mods, fan games, or hack ROMs. Let me give you an example to make it easier to understand. Some time ago, I programmed a mod for Pokemon Emerald for a Poketuber called Kareem, so he could steal other trainers' Pokemon by defeating them. How could I share this mod with all of you? I cannot give you a ROM with the mod, since most of the stuff in it doesn't belong to me, and it might get taken down before even starting. But, I can distribute a standalone patch that just and only contains the code that I have added to modify the game, and let everyone patch their own ROM to play it. This is totally legal, as I'm distributing code that is mine, not from Nintendo. And if you're wondering what happens with the fan projects that are taken down by Nintendo, let me tell you that in reality, it's something quite rare. And it's probably because, in the end, they are using their IP's name, but it usually happens under two factors. The first one, that the mod or fan game is being monetized. And the second one, that it could affect the sales of their games, or could be confused with them, either because it is being advertised during its marketing or launch window, or because it has a very similar name, or because it reaches a great popularity. If you have any of these three things, and mainly if it's quite well known, it's quite likely that Nintendo will take down your project. So now you know why Nintendo targeted Point Crow's mod for Zelda Breath of the Wild Online multiplayer. It was really popular and was released really close to Tears of the Kingdom launch date. But for what we cared about in this video, which were decompilations, I think it's clear that they will be with us for a long, long time, at least if nothing changes. The truth is that all this stuff about decompilations teases a very promising future, not only in comfort and customization, but also in the preservation of video games. To be honest, it's really cool that we can combine both the wonderful video games that so many developers are giving us, as well as the additional experiences that some communities are managing to create, being more and more each day. So above all, if we want this to keep rolling, we must do our best and avoid anything truly illegal like piracy. Support the video games you like, as well as the fandom projects that you think are worth it. This way we all win. But do you know what will never be illegal? To subscribe and leave a huge like if you learned something today. It's always good to vary the content a little bit to bring you videos about things related to this video game industry that we all love. I'll leave in the description some links with a list of many decomps that may interest you, or even make you want to participate in them with the community. Thank you very much for your time, and see you in the next video.